less than a certain countdown later. And we're back, and we're throwing chairs at airships. Conquer the skis. Uh, it's developed by a man named David Stark. No relation to Ned Stark. Um, done on a Java-based engine. You can pick it up for around 15 of your local particular stinky currencies. What is it? In airships, conquer the skis. You will use all of your creativity and skill to design and build fearsome airships and land vehicles to give you the edge in massive aerial battles. Basically, it's a bit of a crossover between FTL and Besieged. And, I don't know, a Lego brick. <laughs> um, this, this is the chair QA edition. This is where we take a game, we talk about it, we uh, break it down what, based on the... Uh, does it launch performance the graphics and the controls we give it a score from one to four based on those criteria, and then we decide whether or not we had fun and we give it a touchy feely score of one to four chairs um and then we then we go and read some hate mail so uh let's kick this off in the teeth then how did airships launch for you my favorite segment my favorite time man this is pass fail that's right people um on humbuntu 1804 dot whatever it is this week ryzen 1700 with a 980 it's a Java game, so stay tuned. No issues, surprisingly. It even gives you an option, a warning, you might say, of uh, do you want to use System Java, which doesn't exist on my box, or the built-in OpenJDK, which allows it to launch and run at 60, at 1080, and 2160, as it damn well should, at a solid 60 FERPS. Graphics-wise, windowed mode, no problem. No issues with full screen. However, it does genuinely flip the hell out when exiting full screen at 1080p on my UHD monitor, but it manages to stick the landing. It does some weird blinky bullshit, but everything resumes. Everything still runs. Uh, looking at it, didn't have any flickering, nothing like that. It is nice, crisp, hipster, pixel nonsense, uh, controls. Look at it, you got keyboard, you got your dribble. There's no big issues here, but I'm going to agree with Pedro is it's kind of scattershot, but at the end of the day, everything does seem to work. So I can give it a clean bill of health and throw it down with four chairs. Um, all right. Well, on Fedora 2864-bit with the i7-6700K and the GTX 1080 Ti. Oh, my God, does it launch. It launches so hard, you guys. It will disturb the underpinnings of your very grip on reality. Um, Performance-wise, it maintains 60 at UHD. I didn't even bother playing it in 1080p because it's a Java game and whatever uh graphics wise the resolution options are a little bit fucky and sometimes they just don't work but you know if you're playing it in full screen then it works fine and controls uh there are keyboard shortcuts uh they're a little all over the place um but the keyboard shortcuts they they make sense like uh m is move b is board etc cetera, etc cetera. you're not it's not going to be like why did they pick this um there there is some issues with uh, cursors sometimes where you will occasionally lose your cursor i found and someone can contradict me on this because the hashtag works for me but there's an option in the input menu called uh, use system cursor and that seemed to resolve most of the losing my cursor issues for me so uh, i'm gonna give it four chairs yeah, for me, uh, UHD didn't work over here on Solus 3.99999 uh, with the Ryzen 5 1600 and the GTX 1080. It would not let me launch the game in UHD, but it did launch in 1080p just fine, and the performance was fine. It's, come on, but look at it. Uh, but yeah, when I went to pick a different resolution, like, say, uh, 3840 by 2160 full screen, it, the game just noped. So I was limited to 1080p in either full screen or borderless window, but if I picked full screen, it would blink all of my monitors. So not only were the uh, resolution options fucked for me, it also messed with the rest of the system, so it gets dinged a chair on that. Uh, controls, Jordan actually brought up the fact that, yes, uh, if you um, enable the system cursor, it tends to remember where the cursor actually is because if you don't it loses track of it it's like you're hovering over the button you can see it's lit and you're clicking on it and it's not doing anything it's like what the hell game and then you move the mouse a little further down it's like oh now it registers but yeah uh once you they do give you that option so i'm not digging the mature for that but it still only gets three chairs because fuck those resolutions <laughs> All right. Well, that's it for the mix with working. If you are on any of those three distributions, you can understand how it will expect to perform. Moving on to fun, Ven, did you did you conquer the skis? 
Hey man, listen, I, I honestly don't completely hate this game coming from me. That's uh, almost borderline praise. It's kind of like FTL, uh, maybe I should say an FTL light. People say roguelite. Um, relies more on skill versus, and management versus your typical RNG bullshit. You build sky or ground ships, so you get the occasional vague suggestion as you're seeing here, and you watch shit play out. At least that's what my simplistic brain meets took away from it. However, that's just the surface. And, you know, if you dig a little deeper in this, there's a gang of switches and shit to fiddle with. It's kind of neat. I mean, it's damn near like sim kill ship with all the options for your armors, your weapons, ship management, and the like. Don't mind it. And unlike so many games released today, it actually has a Not only does it have multiplayer, it's got an active multiplayer community online it's there filled with people who will murder at your face with the most utmost efficiency which i made the mistake of trying and i was like boom yeah i got killed hard uh it might be a borderline spreadsheet simulator but i honestly kind of like this one i don't know why uh this is what i'd call 100 percent if stuck on desert island game because there's so much shit to do and get good at with this business i mean yeah, uh, on the surface, it looks kind of simplistic, but it, there's a lot of shite to do if you get the time to invest in this. You can just fuck around with it, or you can get serious with it. It's hipster pixel. I mean, it looks like something, an HD Atari 2600 game, maybe, but that's not where the fun in this game lies. And I gotta be honest, fourteen ninety nine, hard sell. Hard sell for some... But if this type of shit is your thing, I mean, if you want to play SimCity in the air with uh, ground tanks and skyships, you can do it. There, there's a lot of fun to be had, and if it's your thing, it might be worth it, man. So, you know, give this two chairs with an asteroid, simply because it's got a steep price tag. And, you know, fidelity, graphic-wise, it'd be easy to pass up, but it's well done. And, uh, yeah, I, I can kind of dig it. Yeah. Um, it kind of reminds me a little bit of gratuitous space battles, but you oh, have yeah. a little bit more control sometimes. Yeah. Um, FTL wise, uh, sort of like the, the visual component is the main FTL component because FTL has let you manage a lot of system and it's not very, there, there's RNG and FTL, uh, but there's a ton of mitigation strategies you can use, but that's, we're not talking about that. We're talking about airships. Um, you can spend a lot of time uh, building your airships. You can share them on the Steam Workshop. You can export them to files and email them to your friends or put them on a uh, USB drive and sneaker net it to them. Oh, Morty. Um, yeah, and um, you, you, you can or cannot have a budget. Um, some of the missions require that you have to have a set of airships under a specific budget. You have to manage all of them and coordinate your attacks. There's a couple strategies. You can do boarding. You can do tanks, as Pedro mentioned. You can do just plain old airships. And they give you some starting stuff as a base. And I spent I spent a good amount of time building my airship because I like playing with Legos. And that it's a thing that appeals to eight-year-old Jordan. And that's why I was I invested as much time in the game as I did. Um uh, I didn't play a, a lot of the multiplayer, um, but I was surprised to see that there, yeah, like Ben said, there was in fact a um a fairly active community there. Um which I, which I guess is a good thing. This is you, it's not like um, that other game that we talked about a couple weeks ago that had <laughs> no um, it was an online multiplayer strategy game with no one playing it. Um, the gameplay itself can be a little bland because you're really just moving stuff around, and occasionally you get the option to like input a command. Um, I can certainly say though that I can't outpilot a giant squid though. Til, um, <laughs> but I did kick the shit out of some robotic spiders from uh, Wild Wild West. So deadliest predators in the animal kingdom, my ass. There's good stuff in here, and if this sort of game appeals to you, there's it's 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 one of those things where it seems very simple on the outset, and then once you dig into it, they're like, oh, there's strategy, and you there's different ways you can construct your ship um, to make to adopt different strategies, and it's 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 interesting. It's not something that I personally would want to spend a lot of time on just because I prefer other games that give you sort of more finer grain control, but it's still pretty solid for what it is. I'll give it a two chair. I really like the idea of building your own ship and seeing how it fares, but, and there's always a but, big sticky butt at that, uh, I hate real-time strategy. I do. 
You want to put strategy in my face? It's going to be something like your XCOMs. I love XCOM. But this one, I kind of, I have to, Jordan mentioned um, gratuitous space battles earlier. And yeah, I kind of wish that the game played a lot more like gratuitous space battles. With the added thing that you get to build your own ships and you deploy entire squadrons of your custom built ships and then you just watch them go and you watch the AI do its thing with what you built. I really, really, really like that. I don't want to sit there and micromanage everything and move ships out of the way and move the things forward. I want to see what I created be you know used better than what I can do with it because as it stands. And you can yeah. see it in the video right now. I keep losing. Yeah, the, the, the I, micro in this isn't great. Yeah, I just can't muster the effort to give a damn. So, yeah, maybe just add like an extra mode to the game that says let the AI take control and just play the battles out. Because of that, well, that would turn this game into a time sink for me. I would just sit there and build ships and then watch them I either go down in flames or tear through everything that shows up in their way. I would love that. I really, really enjoyed the shipbuilding in this game. I just didn't like the strategy. Two chairs. All right. Well, that's that for um, Airships Conquer the Skis. Uh, we got anything before we move on to Hit Mill? Any final thoughts you want to tack on? Before I don't hate it. On? It's priced a little on the high side, but... Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it's 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 seventeen dollars Canadian. That's dangerously close to the twenty dollar mark. Unless this is something that you're really into, at least mm -hmm. if you're in Kanakistan, maybe uh, maybe yeah. give it a pass until it goes. Again, on sale. I'm going to throw out. There's a lot of shit to do in here. I mean, if you oh, want, there if you want a game to dive in, get involved, and replayability with the online mode, again, could definitely be worth it. Mm -hmm. Seventeen dollars Canadian Strider. That's like three fifty American. <laughs> it's apparently right. fourteen ninety nine. <laughs> Listen, Steam doesn't know how to do that.